Hello and welcome to another Bevy video. In this video, I'll be covering one of the most powerful new features added to Bevy in the recent updates. So you might be wondering what exactly this feature is. Well, unless you read the title and didn't just click on the thumbnail of this video, of course. It's one-shot systems. You may be wondering what are one-shot systems? Well, with most things in Bevy, one-shot systems kind of say it all. They're systems that don't need to be inserted into the scheduler to be run, which differs from normal Bevy behavior, where you have to insert a system into the scheduler, which is run once per frame. This will at the very least check all run conditions. And if the system doesn't have any run conditions, conditions execute the system every single frame. One-shot systems on the other hand have to be scheduled by another system and inserted so that they will run either during that system or when the commands are executed next. If you want to know more about the Bevy scheduler and how it can be used to change how your systems are executed if you don't want them to run every single frame, I have a video called Bevy Control Flow, which goes over all the different ways you can control what systems are executed. This video is from 0.10, but there hasn't been any major changes to control flow that I'm aware of since 0.10 came out, outside of obviously one-shot systems, which were added in 0.12. By my count, there are three different ways to use one-shot systems in Bevy. Most directly, you can execute a system just once on the world. The other option is to register the system into the world, and then this will return a system ID that can be used in the other two options of running your world. There is also the option to include additional input data that will be executed with the system. I will be covering this in more detail later on in the video, once you have a better idea of where you'd be wanting to use one-shot systems. Now, you may be asking yourself why one-shot systems are so impressive. Couldn't you do all this with run conditions, states, and system sets? While this is true, all the behaviors of one-shot systems could be achieved with these features already in Bevy, and possibly the use of a world capture enclosure that would then execute literally anything because it has world access. It would not be a simple process. Take it from me, I've tried before to implement a game that would use systems that would be added to the scheduler when the appropriate systems were in the right state in order to execute things like cards in a card game activating special effects when other effects are in play. Biggest issue with this is it can be very hard to reason through what run conditions are going to trigger and activate what systems, and also to come up with all the different complex states that need to be in place in order to allow your systems to run it's only when they're needed to and not in other times. This is obviously quite a complex structure and is hard to explain in a video. So instead, I'll leave it up to the user to think about where exactly you would need things like weather systems and that to have specific interactions that may not directly be able to be implemented straightforward in Bevy's current layout system. Although one of the more powerful ways that you can use one-shot systems that I think all of us will appreciate is in UI. Before one-shot systems were implemented, you needed to come up with systems that would check for button interactions and then decide which system to run. And all of the parameters for those systems that get run need to be passed into the outer system that was checking to see if the buttons would be pressed. In my example here, it is not very advanced since the save and load systems take zero parameters. But if I was requiring all the entities with a specific parameter to be passed to the saving system, I would need to include that in my outer wrapping system so that it had the information to pass to its subsystem. But now with the new one-shot system, Bevy will execute the system as if it was an ordinary system. So I can give the system whatever parameters it needs and therefore it can query the world for its own information. And so the signature type of my buttons can be reduced from including all possible actions that I then need to decipher to instead just having a single type of button that has a system ID that when clicked will run the system associated with the system ID. This allows it to be much more easy to generalize what buttons do and instead of having to have dozens of different systems all in charge of operating certain subsets of buttons and working out what commands need to execute when each individual button is pressed and risking multiple buttons executing multiple different things. Instead, it is now possible to have just a few button systems that are instead in charge of working out the specific behavior of buttons, say a button that is left clicked, a button that can be clicked and dragged, or like a slider. It is even possible to take this one step further and combine all of the buttons possible interactions into a single struct that the user can then define what happens on each of these things, such as a right click, middle click, and left click option for a button. Each of these would only need to contain a single system ID since the additional information can be queried by the system itself. And that is not encapsulated into the system ID since this is a type of race approach. And the Bevy game engine is in charge of selecting what parameters when the system is run. This makes creating UIs so much simpler and more expandable since you could in fact make a generic crate that had all the button interactions and layout built in without needing to know the user's direct types to implement specific functionality to buttons. Instead, you would just write a system and attach the 
ID of the system onto the button so that the underlying crate can execute that system without needing to know all the details about the system itself. The third and final example I'm going to give in this video for what makes one-shot systems so powerful is the ability to create user controls and runtime created systems. This is something that as far as I'm aware was very, very difficult, if not in some cases impossible to achieve before 0.13. This is because 0.13 implemented dynamic queries. Prior to 0.12, if you wanted to add a system to the scheduler, you would need to use a second scheduler in order to schedule the system into. Because of the way that Bevy organizes the schedulers, it would remove the specific schedule it was executing from the world in order to execute it while still giving the world mutable schedule access. Then at the end of the schedule, it would insert itself back and run the next schedule. This resulted in limitations in that you could not insert a system into the schedule you were currently running. So you either had to back and forth the system where you'd pass it into the scheduler for that scheduler to then run a, the system and add the actual system you wanted to add into the original schedule or just place the schedule in separate systems such as into the post update or have all your systems that add to the schedule in the pre or post update schedules so that they could execute differently. With the addition of one sort of systems, it is no longer required to add these systems outside of the original scheduler since they are registered to the world and not the specific scheduler that is being executed. This functionality was also greatly boosted by the, an implementation that was added in 0.13, this being dynamic queries. Prior to 0.13, you needed to come up with all your possible variations of queries at compile time, since queries were compiled into the actual structure that they represented. Prior to 0.13, you could only give a user access to the predefined set of queries that you'd come up with at compile time, and they may be able to mix and match these queries dynamically, but they couldn't create wholly dynamic queries. With 0.13, wholly dynamic queries were added, and it's now possible to create wholly unique runtime systems that can even use runtime generated components that would then be able to be customized for something such as a scripting language. Now, as you can see, one shot systems are incredibly powerful. But now let's circle back to what I mentioned at the beginning of the video. How exactly do we use these one shot systems? Thankfully, Bevy has done an amazing job of keeping one shot systems really simple and straightforward to use. The first approach is to literally just directly run a system on the world. This can be done with the run system once command or the run system once with option, which allows you to pass in additional parameters, in this case, a string to the function that will then be used as the input function for that particular system. There is one big drawback though to running this. It's direct straightforward nature means that there is actually no underlying data stored. All local parameters will always have the default value since it won't be saved between runs. And there is no way to use change detection since all components have been added to a system since the last time it ran, if in fact the system has never actually run before. So that's why Bevy gives us two more options. But these options require slightly more setup since you need to register them into the world in order to be able to execute them. This process is done on the world itself and will return an ID that then can be used to run the corresponding system. Once you have a system ID, there are two ways to execute it. You can either use a command which will then execute the system at the end of a set where the execution of commands happens. There is both variants for the system without any parameters and the system with an input parameter. The other option is to run it directly on the world, and this also has the two variations. The biggest limitation of commands is that it's unpredictable what systems will run before the commands get executed, since Bevy dynamically inserts its decision on when to run commands based on a heuristic that determines what systems may conflict with each other and need commands to have run first. So running it on a world is much more selective but does run the limitation of you needing to know exactly when you want to execute the command, but does run the limitation of requiring mutable world access to be included as part of your system. And this usually restricts your ability to do things like include resources and run queries in the system parameters. So instead you would need to collect this information, determine if you're gonna run the system and then run it on the world. As you can see, one shot systems are amazingly powerful and hopefully this trend will continue of Bevy growing and expanding our tool set for each update. I can't wait to see what everyone has planned for this new and powerful feature. Please leave a comment on what you have planned and are going to do now that you know that this amazing new thing is in our game engine. Or you can join my Discord server that is linked in the description. I'm always happy to chat with people about what they have planned for the amazing game engine called Bevy. Finally, I'd like to give a shout out to my only non-Sneaky Beaky Patreon, as you can see the name on the screen right now. As for my Sneaky Beaky patrons, you will find your name hidden somewhere in this video. I'm going to switch away from Patreon soon. and over to Kofi and potentially YouTube memberships since my audience is still small enough that this isn't really that much of a hassle for me. And from what I've been told, 
Patreon is sort of heading in an anti-creator direction, and it's making it harder and harder for creators to use the platform as it was originally intended, and instead making it more costly for less features. I realize that my swapping away from Patreon isn't going to really make any difference to them, but I truly do believe that it's the small creators that make the biggest difference, since if I swap to another platform, it won't affect Patreon, but instead will allow a another platform to grow and improve itself to a position that maybe the larger creators will actually decide that it's worthwhile swapping. And lots of small creators can easily swap since their audiences aren't so large that it is a huge inconvenience and a risk to their livelihood. So I hope that those patrons that have been supporting me will also make the leap and head over to my Kofi to support me when I officially announce it. I do appreciate everyone who is supporting me and I'm not doing this just to make it needlessly difficult. I truly do believe that we need to make the change that we want to see in the world. I'd also like to do a huge shout out to Millian who suggested DaVinci Resolve as a alternative to the software since mine stopped working when I built my new computer and is complaining about the license no longer being valid. I've haven't used very much of DaVinci Resolve, but it seems like a very good editing software, especially considering that it is free for anyone to use. Hopefully it will work out well for editing this video and I will be able to see you all in future videos. Thank you. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you've enjoyed this content.